Hey, Donald Trump talks all the time about his book, The Art of the Deal, what it meant to him, how many copies it sold, and its popularity, especially among business themes books. Look down at the lower right hand corner and you will see the name Tony Schwartz. Tony Schwartz, longtime journalist, was the ghostwriter for Art of the Deal. And in an explosive story in the New Yorker magazine, as told to Jane Mayer, um, the art of the deal author, you see Donald Trump's ghostwriter, tells all. In effect, uh, it is said, quote, I believe that if Trump wins and gets the nuclear codes, there is an excellent possibility it will lead to the end of civilization. Mr. Schwartz says the book could today be titled The Sociopath. The author is with us i know there's no shortage of questions for you on this panel from rachel from your old friend eugene uh i'll start off uh what made you uh talk about this at long last after so many years existing as the ghostwriter i wished brian that i didn't have to do it i wanted to let this fade away into the woodwork and i didn't think about Donald Trump much for 27 years, but when he decided to run for president, given what I knew about him and given how rarely there is someone who does know him well, speaks up about what they know, I simply felt an obligation to do it. Uh, Tony, some of what you describe um, is uh, the kinds of things that we've heard in terms of personality analysis of Mr. Trump from other people, but some of the stuff that you described, I have not heard other people say, um, and it's attention grabbing. Um, and I use the word attention on purpose because one of the things you say is he has no attention span. It's impossible to keep him focused on any topic other than his own self-aggrandizement for more than a few minutes. Um, quote, you say to Jane Mayer, if he had to be briefed on a crisis in the situation room, it's impossible to imagine him paying attention over a long period of time. Didn't you have to get him to pay attention to you for a long period of time in order for you to co-write this book with him? I almost gave up on the book, Rachel, halfway through because it was so impossible to interview him. And I actually called my agent and said from Mar-a-Lago, from my room in Mar-a-Lago over a weekend, I give up, I'm, I'm quitting. And I went, got back on the plane head, heading home and I had this inspiration which was to ask him uh, to let me sit in and listen on his phone call so that I could try to piece together the deals that he was making from other people. And that was the way I got the book done. Tony, I know that uh, our, my colleague Gene Robinson um, definitely wants to ask you a question. I have to ask you one other thing, though, before you go, and that is something about today. I understand that in response to this interview you've done with The New Yorker, uh, you have now received a cease and desist letter from the Trump Organization's chief <laughs> legal officer um, demanding, among other things, that you return all the royalty payments that you received from the book uh, retroactively going back to when you wrote it many years ago. Um, is that true, and, and are you worried? It is true. I think Jane Mayer is uh, maybe just uh, putting up a, uh, a story about that on the New Yorker website. But yes, it is true. I got almost immediately that cease and desist letter delivered to me, you know, by FedEx. And, uh, you know, it's, it's nuts and completely indicative of who he is. There's no basis in anything legal. I suspect that Donald Trump called up his chief legal person and said, go after that guy and do whatever you have to do. So this poor head of legal affairs for the Trump organization had to concoct some facocta stuff about uh, most of which is or, or untrue. So, for example, this notion that I didn't write the book is so preposterous. You know, I am not I am not certain that Donald Trump read every word, but I'm sure certain that I wrote every word. And he made a few red marks in the manuscript and sent it back to me, and the rest was history. The idea that he would dispute that is part of why I felt I had to come forward. The notion that if he could lie about that, Rachel, he could lie about anything. And if you look at the evidence of this campaign, time after time after time, that's what's happened. If I, as I listened earlier to Ted Cruz and all those comments he made, it really sent a chill up my spine because his analysis of Trump's character is remarkably accurate and fiercely negative. And yet he will stand up there tonight and he will pull his punches. I felt somebody, somebody who had a clear uh, 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 exposure to Trump had to stand up. And unfortunately, that had to be me. 
uh, Tony, um, first, I, I guess I might have to volunteer to be a witness for you because, in <laughs> fact, I have had both you and Donald Trump in our one telephone conversation describe that same process of writing the book, that you would make him focus, uh, that, you, that you would interview him and make him focus, and that's the only way he could get the well, book I done. Well, I learned so journalism at clear. your knee, uh, Gene, at the University of Michigan, so <laughs> fun to be on hold, with hold you. Hold on, I'm not that old, Tony. <laughs> 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 no, but, but you were the boss. Right, yeah, well, that's true. But um, what, about, what about your personal feelings, though, toward toward Donald Trump because I've, I, I frankly never heard you express a personal animus toward him. I, I don't have a personal animus toward him, actually even now. I mean, he's tough to have a personal animus toward because there's no there there, there's no heart, there's no soul, there's just a man trying to transactionally do what he thinks will aggrandize him. He doesn't have a, 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 a particular kind of personality that's that I found during the, during the period that I worked with him that was difficult to get along with. I really, my big quarrel with him is about his character. And I couldn't care less about his character if he wasn't running for president. Let him do what he wants to do, as far as I'm concerned. Unfortunately, even in business, as we know, there are a lot of people who got hurt by what he did. But for the most part, my experience with him was indifferent, personally. Tony, one of the things that you say um, about Donald Trump's character, uh, and it's not doesn't seem to be a personal assessment, it seems sort of to be a psychological assessment, is that you describe him as completely compulsive. Quote, the only, th if the only thing left was, excuse me, quote, the only thing left was running for president. If he could run for emperor of the world, he would. Uh, I'm assuming you're speaking hyperbolically there, but a lot of people have sort of been armchair psychologists trying to figure out why Donald Trump ran for president, why he gave up the life he had in order to live this new life as a politician. You feel like this is something that was actually quite predictable based on his his previous life. Well, I don't know that it was predictable that he would run for president, but as I, as I say in the piece, I, I've always seen him as a black hole, as someone who cannot fill himself with a sense of value uh, from anything that comes internally. And so he constantly, throughout his life, you know, way before I met him and long since I met him, has tried to fill up that hole that apparently exists inside him by getting more and more money, more and more praise, more and more attention. And as he said today again, all publicity is good publicity. Now that is crazy. That is simply crazy. What kind of human being says all publicity is good publicity? If it's horrific comments about a person and about your character, that's not good publicity. That's a, that's a bad character assessment. You know, the, the most meaningful thing to me about Donald Trump, the scariest thing, is that his supporters, the, the really rabid ones, the ones who've written me these vitriolic, hate-filled letters uh, in the last several days, don't understand that he does not care about them. He has no interest in them except so far as they vote for him. He will no more take care of him than he will the people who went through Trump University. Those are many of them people in the same kind of circumstances in life. They don't have any advantage, and they're looking for somebody to come along and be their savior. Donald Trump has no intention of being anyone's savior but his own. Full stop. Tony Schwartz, author of Art of the Deal, ghostwriter of Art of the Deal, a book Donald Trump may have mentioned once or twice during the campaign. Tony, thank you very much for coming on the air with us. Yeah, thank, thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.